seconds just to don't worry about nobody around you. Even if you have to close your eyes, you don't see nobody but the Lord. It might, it might start out kind of quiet, but I just want you to just start thanking God for everything that He is doing for you right now. Even the things that you're, that you're hoping for. You begin to go ahead and bless Him in advance. If you believe with your children to be saved, go ahead and bless them in advance if they still looking like they ain't, ain't even ever going to come in. But it seems like that the money, there's more money than there is money, but you believe in God that you're going you to have a good place. You begin to start thanking God, thank the Lord that you prepared me for what's next. Hallelujah. I want such an atmosphere in this house this morning that he said he inhabits the prayers of his people. If you're under shame, you just, now, like I said, you don't have to be loud about it, but if you want to be loud about it and just begin to say, Lord, I give you glory. There have been some places where I've been and some shots were fired, but nothing hit me. I've been in some accidents.
And I thank you that you touch him from the crown of his head to the soul of his feet. Father God, remember the ministers. And I thank you, Father God, for the congregation, for the ushers. And I thank you for the positions. I thank you for those that you have sent forward, Lord God Almighty. And I thank you, Father God, for the work that you have for them to do. I thank you, Father God, for those that you have watching over the internet, Lord God Almighty, that you touch them in their homes, in their minds, bodies, souls, and spirit. And Lord God Almighty, that you bring the healing that we need, whether it be spiritual, physical, emotional, or mental. And Lord God Almighty, financial healing and abundance to the church, Lord God Almighty, and every individual.
Of our hearts, 
Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, I strengthen our redeemer. And the saints of God have said amen. amen. We do all of the spirit of the Lord. We thank God. Ushers, thank y'all for standing so long this morning. We appreciate you. You may be seated. Thank you for welcoming everybody into the house of the Lord. Shaking their hand, hugging them if they would receive a hug. We thank you for being dutiful in what you've done. Amen. We want to thank God for this praise team. Y'all would have thought they rehearsed 20, about two or three weeks in, in a row, but this is a group that just came together this morning. Amen. And we thank God for this time. We thank God for this. We thank God for the ministerial staff of this great house. Those some are sitting in the pulpit, some are in the choir, some are on uh, instruments. We thank God for our ministerial staff, our deacon, deaconess, uh, Lady Pittman. We thank God for her. We thank God for the mothers of this church. We give God the praise and glory for them. Uh, we are so grateful to have all of you that have come from near and far, part of the house, and those of you that are here to visit with us. We pray that uh, something will be done and said to make you feel welcome. If you don't feel welcome, you can help us by letting us know what we can do better to make this time of fellowship better because we do want to have fellowship with brothers and sisters as the Lord would make that possible. Amen. From the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 in verse number 7. 1 Corinthians, oh, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 7. Probably everybody in here don't even really have to look for it, you can already quote it by heart. Because in Sunday school, you should have learned that. And, and I had a Sunday school teacher, she would go over and over and over and over so you can close your eyes and just say, man, I know that. But knowing it and doing it and living in it, because we got a lot of head knowledge. Uh -huh. But God wants that stuff that's in our head to manifest in our actions. And I'll read it for you. You don't even have to stand. Just rest in your seat. For we walk by faith and not by sight. I want to use for a thought for just a moment, if you would will. And I promise I'm going to do my best to to not take an hour. <laughs> I'm going to do my best. But I want to talk to you from a theme, the eyes of faith. The eyes of faith. Brothers and sisters, we, we have to realize that sometimes what we see is not really what we see. All right. All right. All right. All right. I had a former pastor of mine, he was he told this story, he was trying to be a little funny, but and it was a little funny. He was talking about this man who had been dating this woman. And they finally got married. And on the day, uh, on the night of the marriage, she went into the bathroom. And when he, she came out, she did not look like the same person. <laughs> That went into the bathroom. Come on, man. He was saying that he was saying in, 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 he said that when she went in, she had she was 36. 24. 36. He said, but when she came out, she had taken off the long eyelashes. And she had gotten some stuff and took the eyebrows off that she had painted on. And had taken off the hair that she had and had set it on the counter. Had taken off the push-up and everything was pushed up. And left the teeth in the glass. <laughs> and he was saying that to the shock that when he looked at her when she went in the bathroom, it was something different. 
than Brother Gaynor. Wow. <laughs> and brothers and sisters, what I'm trying to tell you is, is that sometimes our eyes can play tricks on us. Because everything ain't what it seems. Amen. We have an adversary that is good at it. Making us believe something is real when it's not as real as we think. Do you not know that your mind can have you so messed up to the point where, where you worried about some stuff that ain't even happened yet? But you can see it already happened because, because you already made up your mind that's the way it's going to be. You look at the bills every month. And you say, I don't know how we're going to do this. I don't know how we're going to do this. And, not, and all of a sudden, the month done passed, and you look back, and you have made it through. Yeah. But at the first of the month, or whenever, whenever the money has run out, you sit there and you say, how are we going to do this? And God is saying that you need to learn how to walk with your eyes of faith because I am for you. Yeah. And if I'm for you, you would work in your history. And I'm not down to nobody. I'm just saying what I'm saying is, is that we declare that we are Christian. Yes. We declare that God, that we trust God in, in everything that we do, and we and we and we put our trust in Him. But 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 is it really that we put our trust in God? Or sometimes do we put our trust in our own ability? Because if we really trusted in God, then we will have peace. Ah. Even when the storms are raging. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even when sickness coming down our body, we're not, we're, we're not gonna run, we're not gonna run and fall apart. We're just gonna say, I'm gonna trust God. Yes. Because he came through the last time and, and the time before that. And if he don't come through, he's gonna sustain me. Yeah. And I know that we have some people in here that have had some tests of faith. Where, where, where everything you tried did not work. And you had to step back and say, okay, God, I don't know what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. And you're still here because you, that God stepped in when you, get, when you gave up. Because he, sometimes God will allow you to go all the way past yourself. Then you come to the point of saying, I don't have no other choice but to trust. And church family, that's what God wants us to get. He wants us to get to a place where we stop trying to fix people, fix our, fix our own life. I, I know we, we had that show where uh, I know that's fixing everybody's life and hers is tore up. <laughs> and we watch that, that, and sometimes we watch that show so faithfully of how she's going in, and then there's so much brokenness, and, and I know that can't fix what. what
And all I'm trying to do this morning is put somebody out of stuckness. Because you got captured and you got you got entertained with the stuff that's going around. And God said, I need to change your lens. I need to give you some eyes of faith so you can see the thing as I said it. But we walk by faith and not by what we see. Is there anybody in here that ever, ever, ever sat down and worried over some stuff and worried over some stuff and then all of a sudden when God fixed it, you look back and say, why was I worried about it? And I want to ask the question, have we done it more than one time? Oh, I'm trying to tell you, all through my life I've seen God working out. And I've seen him working out. And he said, now why are you going to get to this point where I brought you through this and I brought you through that? You're going to get to the point where you're going to fall apart right here? Did I bring you the first time? Yes, sir. Too many countless times God has proven himself faithful, faithful yes, he has. in our lives. Yes, he has. Yes. Anybody here ever been sick? Yes. And God healed you? Yes. Now he ain't just healed you one time, he healed you many times. Yes. And the thing that you need to realize is, is that, that if we can if we get a lens of, uh, of us going through right now and, and, and we got a sickness that's going on and we can see God done heal us before and he ain't done it before, he'll do it again. I need y'all to encourage somebody and look at him and say, he's going to do it again. Because, because, because God said that we've been, we've been allowing the enemy to talk us into the spirit of worry. He said, "You've allowed you you allowed the enemy to box you into a place where where you like this right here, and you almost in a you're almost in a prison, and there's no bars." Ah, I heard that. But I came today to unlock and move all of those stuff out of the way because because. And, and you 
can't, and you got blinders on because you can't see nothing but what you're trying to see. That's right. I'm closing with this, but in the book of John, chapter number 11, the Bible says that Jesus was told that Lazarus was sick. Watch the eyes of faith. Check out what, check out how Jesus handled the circumstances and the situation that was going on with Lazarus, Mary, and Mark. Jesus was our teacher, right? Yeah. And he was teaching us that, and he left it on record for us to walk in. And he said, now Lazarus is sick. And I need you to come see about it. This is what Mary Martha, the notice that they sent out. And they wanted Jesus to be in a hurry to get there. Yes. Isn't it amazing how we want Jesus to hurry up and come, but then when he needs us, we slow him? We have to have five confirmations and the, the, the sky to crack and the light in the fall. But, but when we're we in trouble, we need Jesus to get there right now. In the hurry, we need him to be there yesterday. But when they told Jesus that, that's Mark, that's John 11. All the way down, John 11, so I don't, y'all don't think I'm making it up. So, Jesus, when he, when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he, he looked at the fellas and said, this sickness is not un to death. But to, he said, well, so that God can get the glory yeah. is the reason why this is happening. Yeah. Jesus already knew what he was going to do because he had eyes of faith because he already seen Lazarus being healed. He already seen Lazarus being raised from the dead even before he got sick. Now, the Bible said that he told him, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but so God can get the glory. And the Bible said he stayed where he was two more days. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. My God. Yeah. Uh -huh. Seems like something, is, is, there, is, there, is there anybody here that feel like that, that God has been dragging his feet on you? Uh -huh. You cried out to him, you've been asking Lord why, and he just seemed like yeah. he's just taking his time. But I'm gonna tell you that while he's taking his time, he's gonna get some glory out of our lives. And the Bible said that after two more days, he said, Come on now. We're gonna go wake up Lazarus. Cause he's sleep.
Uh -huh. yeah. When he get there, yes. he's with, he's met with. If you'd have been here, you would have. All right. Uh -huh. My brother would have died. Uh -huh. But before before he even got to Martha, he had to deal with the folk that were with him. Uh -huh. Can I tell y'all something that I know for real, for real, for real? That sometimes you gotta separate from some folk that mean you well. Child, you look bad. God have mercy. What does happen with you? Those are folk you need to separate from. You need to get away from them. You need somebody to say, hey, I believe God is gonna pick you up. I believe God is gonna make you strong. But Jesus said, I'm glad I wasn't there. For you to be able to believe. Right, you. Now you're walking with him. You, you're walking with the resurrection. You don't even know who you're walking with. Yeah. Because your eyes are dull. Yeah. Your eyes are messed up. Yeah. You can't even see who I am. No. I done showed y'all fast by a thousand. Yeah. I done showed y'all done a whole lot of stuff. And you still don't believe. Yeah. So what I want you to do is walk with me. I'm going to show you something. See, I'm going to tell you what I, what, I, what I want you to know right now. Is that in this next season, you got to drag unbelief with you. So that when you get to the point where God manifests, unbelief will have to believe. Yes, sir.
amazed at myself. It's okay. <laughs> but we thank God for you. We love you. Yes. Ain't nothing you can do about it. But because we have a God that, that cares yes, he does. about the smallest thing. The Bible said, I heard T.D. Jake say it. He said, not only do God count the hairs on your head, he know the ones that are still in the cold. All right. <laughs> that's, how, that's, how, that's how special you are to him. He, he, know, he know the hair that fell out. And the ones with, and the little springs are still <laughs> I can joke about it. But I'm gonna tell you, I, I, it used to be to the point where you look at it and you get sick. That's the kind of hair I used to have. See, I can talk about what I used to, but I can never I can talk about it manifest it's coming back at me. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. But we want you, we want you to know that you have a God that's on your side. Yeah. He's for you. Yes, he is. There's a song that says, don't go change it. Let God do the change it. God, God can change us. From the inside out. But we gotta be willing to let him change us. If by chance there's anybody in this building, I'm just sweeping the corners because I know most everybody in here have already given their life to the Lord. But I don't want to assume that everybody has. But I want you to look the look past what you think. And I want you to see God with his arms out. As you've seen in the scripture, when the, when the son came home after being prodigal, the Bible said the father was standing there with his arms out waiting on him. And everybody in this building has wasted some time, wasted some talent, wasted some ability and, some, and all of that. We all have that day. But you made up your mind today, I'm tired of wasting time. I want God to anoint me. I want him to save me. I want him to change my vision. I want to see as God sees. Yes. I don't want all the stuff that's going on around me to define me no more. I want the rest of my days to be the best of my days. And you don't know the Lord in the heart of your sin. I promise you won't be alone if you walk in this all God walk in. Let me introduce you to the one that's able to save, to heal, and to deliver. If you're in this building this afternoon, this morning, and you're not saved, come on. Come on.
Lord, without without the, the honors of being in this young lady to Christ while while we while we talk to others. See, I, I don't have I don't have no complex. All the thing is that as a child of God, we ought to be able to lead somebody to Christ. Is that right? Amen. So we our business is gonna lead them. But I need to talk to somebody else. I need to talk to somebody else because the spirit of worry has been has been trying to overtake you.
That's all that I want to do. Father, in the name of Jesus, there's no love like your love, Lord. And as we come in, in prayer this afternoon, thank you for my sister. Thank you for Sister Crystal, Lord God. Thank you for the saving grace. Thank you for the sisters leading her to you, Lord. She's your daughter. You knew her when. Now I pray, God, that you would fill her with your spirit. You would open up her eyes. That you would break off any wrong relationship. That as she grows in you right now, God, the devil is going to try his best to pull her back. But in the name of Jesus, we break every soul tie, every lying spirit, everything that came in her life to try to break her, everything that tried to define her, Lord. We speak peace. We speak deliverance. We thank you for it. Sweep through this room right now, God. Touch every life, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, let them know that you are you are for them. Give them eyes of faith that they can see past their circumstances. And begin to begin to declare your truth. Let the sick say I'm healed.
of the faithfulness of God. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. In the word of our testimony and the testimony of others. So Brother Elder is going to come and share for a moment with you. Happily, we pray that God will bless you. But I, I would miss to hear what God is saying to the church and to some, in, some individual that might be facing some challenges right now. Twice. 
said, but I don't. He said, what they looking for? He said, you don't have it.
you, Lord God. I thank you for every giver and their willingness to give. And I pray, God, that you would return to them 100 fold. Lord God, give us wisdom and understanding of how to take the funds and use them in the best manner possible. We thank you, that, Lord God, that you were blessed now. And we give you praise for our ushers serving in the house of the Lord today. This we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
I can't think of the name of it, Lord Jesus. But anyway, God saw fit to bring me through that too. God was getting over for the time of that. So I choose God, not God. God be the glory. So many testimonies and so many things that God is doing. We are truly grateful to the Lord for all of you, again, for being here with us. Um, I think that we were able to witness a beautiful wedding on yesterday uh, for God. Brother Michael and Sister Sarah. And we thank God for, for being invited to be a part of that great celebration. Uh, I want to thank uh, Minister Mark for a powerful word on last Sunday. Thank you for a great teaching on Wednesday night. So, If you are available, we have Bible study online. Uh, we were trying to have it in the, in the building, but it's working out better online because we have more participation. You don't have to drive to the church. All you have to do is dial some digits and automatically right there into the Bible study. Uh, we want to invite you this, this uh, Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Uh, we, we were there for about an hour with praise and worship and prayer and the Word of God. So if you're able to come in and tune in and you don't have a number, you call somebody, I believe we'll make sure you get it. All right. Uh, with all of that being said, if you would stay. Come on. Come on. I have something for everyone, including our guests. Uh, Sister Sarah, Sister Sarah, Sister Sarah, Sister Sarah. I don't want you to leave without getting it. Amen. 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 Again, we want to thank thank all of you. you can go ahead and stand. Uh, thank Sister uh, Rita for making sure that we had something in in honor of uh, our peak out, and thank her for helping out with that. Uh, we we don't want to minimize it because it's cancer is something that is something that we, uh, we we all have to deal with or have dealt with. Happy birthday. Say a person so happy birthday to you. Yeah, we missed the uh who was it? Was Reverend Thompson? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to y'all. Happy birthday to y'all. Happy birthday. Happy birthday.